questions on. Uh, that that is coming. I got through half of them, uh, so somehow they got to the bottom of my stack somehow, and I found them the other day. Oh, oh my goodness, that's just great news. Uh, so I'm working on those, and what's going on? What's happening is I'm looking at your corrections. I'm looking at the answers that you got with the page numbers, uh, giving you back half credit for those that are acceptable, uh, and, and going from there uh, to to correct uh, that grade a little bit. Test tomorrow that's on the board that's on RunWeb will not be tomorrow. Uh, that will be on Tuesday. We're planning on Tuesday. Uh, we will have a quiz on 4A tomorrow. Okay, 4A. That deals with everything up to scalars and vectors. So anything up to scalars and vectors. We talked about mechanics. We talked about dynamics. We talked about... Uh, kinematic and static, so we have those. We talked about systems, we talked about boundaries and surroundings, uh, we talked about uh, time intervals, uh, we talked about scalars and vectors, that's your quiz tomorrow. Okay? Quiz 4A is tomorrow, in play. In play, yes. Yes. Okay? Uh, section review questions 4B, 1 through 4, 7, 9 through 11 is due tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully you had worked on those, have been working on those some a little bit. Uh, if you find yourself having time uh, to do that, uh, th those are due tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Um, are you worried about what those questions are about? Sorry, I just summarized yesterday, but it's something you mentioned that I was wondering. Okay. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll learn about them today. Yeah, hopefully we'll learn about those today. Uh, so we'll have quiz 4B on Monday, and then we'll have your test on Tuesday. Okay? Should be a short test. It's not a very long chapter, uh, but deals with just kinematics. But yesterday we talked about displacement and distance. Displacement and distance. Distance is the total distance we travel. Or the total linear length that we travel is by distance. Uh, so it doesn't matter if we change directions, all right? We're going to take up all the distances and find our distance. Our displacement, though, our displacement is a net change, or the change, or the difference from the beginning point to the ending point. Distance is a scalar or a vector. Scalar. Scalar. I mean, one piece of information. So, five feet, five miles, 20 miles, 20, 20 meters, those are all distances. Whereas, displacement is a vector. So, we need what with our Scalar, a direction. So either up, down, right, left, east, west, northeast, southwest, whatever type of directions uh, that we need would give a vector. Okay? So even if we went five feet to the left, that is a vector. That is has a magnitude and direction. Magnitude and direction. I want to begin with that. Uh, so we had some examples on the board uh, to be able to figure out distance and displacement. Yes? Um, if we have like a question with Dave saying like, what's this displacement? Would we have to be exact if like we went to just the southeast point of view? Right. It would, you, you would be, the question would be able to, for you to give a good, good answer. So if it's going diagonal between north and east, then yeah, you say northeast. Like would it be wrong if we just said right? If it were, if it was right, but if it's if it's going if it's going up, I know what you mean. I just mean, do we have to be? If it's going up like that, right would not be the correct answer. Uh, so here you would say uh, you would say northeast or something like that. So you, you need to be as exact as, as, exact as, a, as possible, uh, because going with that aspect, right could mean a number of things. It could be very straight to the right, it could be moving down, it could be moving up, and so we want we want a little bit more more than that. All right. So we talked about that. Then we started talking about average speed. Average speed. Formula for average speed.
So d equals distance over change in time, our time interval. How do I know if this speed or velocity? Or what is the difference between speed and velocity? Did we talk about velocity yesterday? Yeah. We just talked? Yeah. Well, you know, he gave yeah. us like a whole beat. Okay. So we're dealing with speed and velocity. Speed is average speed. We talked about that right there at the end. Uh, it's not going to give us instantaneous. I asked what gives us instantaneous, and somebody told me speedometer, which is true, or a speedometer, uh, or a radar gun would give us instantaneous speed. Uh, whereas everything else, the calculations that we do, we are basically dealing with average speed, the total distance divided by the change in time. Uh, velocity is very similar to speed in the fact that speed is a scalar, velocity is a vector. The formulas are very similar. Where we're using bold print. So here is our italic size print for speed. And again, speed could be absolute value of the V. This is velocity, because it's bold print, and this is bold print D, which means displacement. displacement. Now, when do you think displacement and distance will be the same? Straight line. What's that? Straight line. Okay, that's, that's, you are correct. Let's, de let's describe it a little bit differently. When is distance and displacement the same? Going forward, not turning right now. Okay, we're getting there. You are correct. Isn't it positive? Not necessarily. Distance will always be positive. So everything Michael said is correct. So if you put those together, distance and displacement will be the same. If we travel in a straight line, no turn. Travel in a straight line, no turns. So I go five feet this way, and then turn around and five feet this way. My distance is 10, but my displacement is zero. zero. All right, because I'm back at the beginning. If I go five feet this way, and then five feet this way, my distance is Eight. 10. Okay. But my displacement is going to be not necessarily five because that is going to be more than that's going to be more than five. It's really going to be uh, the two point five square root of ten. That's basically what it's going to be. I'm sorry, square root of uh, fifty is what it's going to be. Uh, so five square root of two would be my displacement. Uh, but again, again, I made a turn, so my displacement is different. So if I go ten feet this way or five feet this way, and then another five feet this way. All right, didn't make any turns, so therefore my distance and displacement are the same. So keep that in mind, when is distance and displacement the same is when I have no turns, and I travel in a straight line. Travel in a straight line. You have to stop there. What's that? You have to stop there, right, so you can't come back. Well, you don't have to stop. As long as you travel in a straight line, your distance, uh, well, you, yeah, you have to have a beginning point and an ending point. All right, so even here, when will velocity and speed be the same? When you're traveling in a straight line, no turns. All right, traveling in a straight line, no turns. If I have turns, then I have a different velocity. Now, us in everyday life, we correlate velocity and speed as being the same. In science, in physics, Velocity and speed are not the same. Speed is a scalar. Velocity is a vector. So for velo velocity, we need to have a direction. direction. So let's use this example again. I go five feet this way. Five feet this way. It takes me two seconds to do that. Okay, so I go five feet this way, five feet this way. Takes me 10 seconds to do that. I'm sorry, I said two seconds. 
What is my speed? What's that? What is my speed? It took me two seconds to do that. So the total distance is? 10. My time interval is 2. So therefore, that equals 5 paces per second. Okay. Now, take this same example. What is my displacement? Well, my displacement is this distance here. All right. My displacement is, if I use my Pythagorean theorem at my algebra, that is 5 square root of 2. And it's Or what is my velocity? Well, that's displacement, so that's 5 squared of 2 over 2. Which if I take my calculator, I can take my calculator and calculate what the square root of 2 is. So like here it would be 2.5 squared of 2 uh, paces per second. So because I had a turn, let me put arrows here to show you my directions. I went to the right and went up. Because I had a turn, my dis distance and displacement are different. They're not the same. So therefore, my speed and velocity are not the same. And again, these are average. Average speed and average velocity. They're not instantaneous. Uh, when, we're, when we're dealing with that. So... Do make sure that my distance and displacement are not the same. Now, if I have this on a, on a test or a quiz, I will let you know what the distance of here is uh, so that you don't have to do your math to do that, uh, to calculate that out. All right? Now, do you remember when we did dealing with velocity? I mentioned that if I ask you to solve for something else, or I give you your, your speed, Say I want you to solve for d, distance. I want you to rearrange the equation first. So here, we're going to take the delta t to this side. Algebra tells me to do what? Multiply. So that means d equals d delta t. I want you to see that first. Then you plug the numbers in. And I'm going to have a worksheet here. And we'll, we'll have some practice on our worksheet, and you, we, would, we would do that. If they ask me to solve for time, well, I can do this here, and then I can get rid of the V by doing what? Dividing by V. Dividing. So D over V equals change in T. So I would want you to rearrange the equation first. All right, every year, everybody don't believe me. But when they take their test, I mark them wrong for not rearranging, they get upset. So remember, rearrange first. I want to see the formula first before you plug any numbers in. Then you plug the numbers in and solve. Okay? So again, speed, scalar, velocity, vector. Alright? Speed, scalar, velocity, vector. Are you giving us the worksheet this week? Mm -hmm. Is that going to be your homework for you as well? Well, whenever I give it to you, there's going to be part of it that it will be homework, yes. All right. Next term we talked about, we talked about distance, talked about displacement, talked about speed, talked about velocity. The other one is acceleration. Change of velocity. 
philosophy. There are two types of accelerations. There is negative acceleration, and there is positive acceleration. Negative acceleration and positive acceleration. A lot of times, a negative acceleration is, is called de-acceleration. But with these definitions, de-acceleration doesn't necessarily fit. De-acceleration really means slowing down. But these definitions are going to have two different definitions that we want to, want to remember. All right, do remember is the change, the rate of change of velocity, so we're dealing with direction. So let's look at positive. First of all, let's look at the direction. Positive direction. So if we're increasing speed in the positive direction, we are have a positive acceleration. When you think of increase, we think of positive or negative? Positive. positive. When you think of the going to the right or going up, you're thinking a positive or negative direction. Positive and positive make a positive. Positive, positive acceleration. Now we could have a positive acceleration going to the left. When you think of going to the left, you think of positive or negative? Negative. What goes with a negative that would give me a positive? The negative. When we talk about speed, how do I get a negative speed? A decrease. We already had the backwards with the negative here. Which is a negative. So, what is a po positive acceleration? An increase in speed in the positive direction or a decrease in speed in the negative direction. And that's a harder, that's a harder one to, figure, to, to think of. Because that means I'm slowing down going backwards. When I'm slowing down, going backwards, I, I am accelerating. Going in reverse. Mm -hmm. Think about that. When I'm slowing down, going backwards, I am, I am accelerating. Okay? Makes, makes a difference. An example over here would be a... Parachute, a skydiver, somebody jumping out of an airplane. All right. Before he pulls his parachute, what is his speed? But it's a positive speed, right? We're increasing speed as we're falling. We get faster, right? And we're going down is negative. So what type of acceleration will we have? All right, negative acceleration. But when he pulls the parachute, the parachute comes up. Now what happens to his speed? Slowing down in the negative direction. So now he has a positive acceleration. So keep that in mind. So when we look at negative, acceleration, positive direction, so what should we be doing in the positive direction to have a negative acceleration? Slowing down, going backwards. All right. Decrease of speed. 
We're slowing down. I'm going to drive along the road 50 miles an hour and I tap, tap on the brake. Now I'm slowing down to 30 miles an hour, but I'm going the same direction. I have a negative acceleration. Or if I'm going in the negative direction, what should I be doing? Increasing speed. I have a negative acceleration. That means I put the car reversed and step on the gas. I'm going backwards, I'm speeding up. I am accelerating negatively. A little bit different than what we normally would think of acceleration and deceleration. Because again, all we think of when we, when we were growing, when we we're growing up, or we're thinking about it, I always think of acceleration speeding up in the positive direction. I always think of deceleration slowing down in the positive direction. But in physics, we have to think of the negative direction as well. So the easy way to remember this is remember your signs. Am I speeding up or slowing down? If I'm speeding up, it is a Positive. If I'm slowing down, it's a negative. And remember my signs and my direction. If I'm going in the positive direction, if I'm going up or going to the right, it is positive. If I'm going down or going backwards, it is negative. And I will always know if it's a positive or negative acceleration. I will have some examples. I will give you an example. I say, okay, is this Example of positive acceleration or negative acceleration. Say, for instance, I say a rock falling from the top of a cliff. Is it positive acceleration or negative acceleration? Right? You sure? Because you're increasing the speed going down, so it's a little bit negative. Okay, so that's negative acceleration. Throw a rock up in the air. Is that positive acceleration or negative acceleration? Sure. Throwing it up in the air, rock up in the air. What happened? What's going on to the speed? It's slowing down. Slowing down. What direction am I going? Down. If I throw the rock up in the air. Alright, so throw the rock up in the air. What direction am I going? Positive. Positive. And what's happening to the speed? Negative. Slowing. Positive and negative, what kind of acceleration do I have? Negative. Negative. Because eventually that rock's going to come back down. Mm -hmm. So it is slowing down as it goes up. So think of your signs to be able to determine is it positive or is it a negative acceleration? Acceleration equals VF subtract F minus V subtract I over delta T. A represents acceleration. VF represents final velocity. VI represents initial velocity. And delta T is time interval. My units are always the distance unit divided by a time unit squared. If my distance unit is miles and my time unit is hours, what's my units for velocity? Miles per hour. What would be my unit for acceleration? Distance units over time unit squared. Miles per hour squared. If my distance unit is meters and my time unit is seconds, what is my units for speed? Meters per second. Distance over time. What's my units for acceleration? Meters per second squared. 
if my distance units is feet and my time units is minutes, what is my units for speed? Feet per minute. What is my units for acceleration? Feet per minute squared. So make sure you remember my units, distance units over time unit squared. Acceleration is a vector. Needs to have a direction. No, just the units. I'm just talking about the units. Okay. So if I if you're answering an acceleration problem, I shouldn't have three feet per second. Because that's velocity. I should have three feet per second squared. Alright? The squaring has nothing to do with the number. And we'll see that in just a second. Okay. Now acceleration. If we go back, rate of change of velocity or speed. For velocity, we need what? We need two pieces of information, correct? Mm -hmm. What two pieces? Velocity, final, minus. Now, for velocity, I need two pieces of information. Velocity is a scalar or a vector? Vector. A vector. Oh. I need two pieces of uh, information. A magnitude and a direction. So if I'm driving down the road 30 miles per hour and I make a right hand turn at 30 miles per hour, I've accelerated. Because my velocity this way is 30 miles per hour west, and then all of a sudden I turn here at 30 miles per hour north. Alright, I didn't change my speed, but I did change my direction, so I change my velocity. So there is an acceleration, even though the magnitude didn't change, the direction changed. Or if I'm going down 30 miles per hour west, and then step on the brake, now I'm going 20 miles per hour west, I still accelerated because I changed my magnitude and not my direction. So acceleration would be a change change in magnitude of my velocity, or a change in direction of my velocity, or a change in both. Acceleration would be a change in my magnitude of my velocity, or a change in my direction of my velocity, or a change in both. It would be given to you. Could you give one? So a car is traveling at 5 feet per second and changes velocity to 30 feet per second in 5 seconds. What is its acceleration? 
So again, we would write acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity over time interval. And then you put your, your numbers in. What's my final velocity? 30. 30. What's my initial velocity? 5. Five. And what's my time interval? 5. So there's 25 over 5, which equals 5. And what's my unit? Feet per second squared. All right? And again, doing any kind of calculations, we always want to deal with significant digits. All right? 5 has how many significant digits? 30 has how many significant digits? No. 1. The 0 is insignificant. And the 5 has 1, so I need to have how many in my answer? 1. So there's my answer, 5 feet per second squared. All right, so say for instance, we're looking at number, what do you have to do? You had 9 through 11, 9, 10, 11. Let's just look at number 11. A freight train must approach a road crossing at 16 kilometers per hour. After passing through the intersection, the train speeds up to 65 kilometers per hour, taking 10 minutes to do so. What is the train's acceleration during this time in meters per second squared? Okay. Here's the key to this. They want your answer in meters per second squared. So that means you gotta change kilometers per hour to meters per second squared. Then you gotta change the minutes to seconds before you put them in any before you put them in your formula. So use your unit conversions like we learned back in the beginning of the year. Change kilometers per hour to meters per second. Change your minutes to seconds. And plug it into that formula and you'll get your answer. Okay, uh, so that was the toughest one. The other one, you just change your formulas around. Okay, all right. Have a good night. We'll talk more about this tomorrow.